More than 200 Israelis are being held by Hamas in Gaza. The armed group has released some on humanitarian grounds, but says others won't go free until Israel stops its airstrikes. Qatar is leading negotiations to stop the war from escalating and to free those in detention. Our target is to release all of the civilian hostages. That's what we're working on and that's what we want to achieve. Since the first hour, we've been receiving several calls from countries around the globe asking Qatar's assistance to help their uh, uh, citizens in Gaza uh, release. It is not an easy uh, process. It's a very complicated uh, process, but we're working with all of our uh, efforts and our technical teams in trying to achieve that, uh, that goal. The difficulty is still there. If there is a continuing bombing, if there is a continuing escalation in the situation, our task is getting more difficult. The mediators need a period of calm, needs a, 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 a situation where we can speak easily to both parts and try to be more creative in, in bringing more initiatives that can get those civilians out. The tiny Gulf nation has become a powerhouse in international diplomacy. Doha was the venue for negotiations between the US and the Taliban on Afghanistan. It houses the largest US airbase in the Middle East, but also allows groups like Hamas and the Taliban to maintain political offices in Doha. That's something Israel has taken issue with, its ambassador to the United Nations accusing Qatar of harbouring terrorists. It's broadly understood Qatar's actions are taken with the support of the United States. But it's a fine line for the US to tread. Secretary of State Antony Blinken was in Doha recently, meeting with top officials. He reportedly asked the Qatari Prime Minister to have state-owned news network Al Jazeera tone down its coverage of Israel's war on Gaza. The network was not asked to do so, and it continues to report from inside Gaza. Israel's Attorney General has approved the closure of Al Jazeera's operations in the country. That hasn't yet happened, but the station is being targeted in other ways. The family of its Gaza bureau chief was killed in an Israeli airstrike. Wael al dahdu had sent his wife and children to southern Gaza in line with Israel's evacuation order. They were supposed to be safe. He found out while live on air that his wife, son, daughter and grandson had died. An Israeli TV segment on Thursday reported the strike was intentional. It comes after an Israeli tank shelled southern Lebanon, <laughs> killing a Reuters cameraman and badly wounding two staff members of Al Jazeera. Reporters Without Borders said it was deliberate and a war crime. Al Jazeera says its staff continue to carry out courageous and professional work, despite the dangers and indiscriminate bombing. Meanwhile, Qatar continues to call for a permanent solution to the Israel-Palestine issue, demanding the two-state solution be implemented. Our priority right now is not to expand that circle of violence beyond the borders of the conflict area itself. And that's a challenge that we've been facing. And to, to, to work on that matter, we've managed to work with our neighbours, regional players and also international partners to make sure that we work together around um, um, you know, facing those, those challenges and presenting uh, permanent solutions to the issue. Now, in terms of this conflict, uh, I have to say, the only solution for it is the long-standing permanent and just solution for the Palestinian case. We've been calling for that. Uh, and, and our political position has been clear since day one when it comes to, to the Palestine situation. Palestine deserve to have an independent state by itself, uh, uh, based on the Arab uh, Peace Initiative, two-state solution with uh, the border of 1967 uh, uh, and East Jerusalem as its capital. This is nothing new. We have mentioned that before. We said that we need to go back again to the main issue, which is a permanent solution to the issue, and not to think of only temporary solutions and forget about the Palestinian case. And I think that's the issue that, that we need to fo focus on, and that's the issue that uh, we've been discussing either in regional institutions, such as the GCC and the Arab League, but also international communities, such as the United Nations. International efforts to allow humanitarian aid access into Gaza are also underway, with Qatar warning that if assistance isn't allowed in, it's going to be a disaster. Faith Orr, Arise News, Doha.